Welcome. In this video, we are going to finally start getting our hands dirty with data. So the latest watch operating system from Apple tracks both hand washing duration as well as the number of times your hands are washed. Needless to say, ever since this feature was rolled out, my hand washing routine has improved. Open the hand washing data set, see Canvas. For those of you in my class, I'll show you how to do that, where to find that in a sec. This file contains information on my hand washing habits between late 2021 and January 2022 create a hand washing duration frequency table for January only using technology. Once that's done, let's consider some ways this table can be improved. Now, I won't be showing the actual guided notes anymore on your own page, on your own notes. You need to copy your table below and write information on how you obtain those tables. All right, as you can see, I have the Canvas page open to our modules here. And on the top, you'll see data sets. Right now, you only have one set that's the hand washing data, and it's both an Excel and StatCrunch um, format. I'm going to click on this one, the .scs file, and then click on it again, and it'll start, it'll start a download. All right, so now that we've downloaded the StatCrunch file, go ahead and open StatCrunch. And then you want to go here to the StatCrunch menu, go to Session, and then right here click on Upload, and then choose your file. Mine is in my Downloads, and it's right here. Okay, so as you can see, this starts on November 3rd and shows the different dates as well as the starting time, excuse me, the ending time, then the starting time of that hand washing session. So you want to go down here until you find January and highlight the first duration, and that's in seconds from January. And scroll all the way down, hold on shift and select, and then you want to copy. If you go here to the edit menu and hit copy, it literally just tells you what keys to press on your computer. It won't actually copy it for you. So once that's done, skip a column and paste it you know, at the top. So row one in column labeled var six, and we're going to rename that. Um, I'm going to rename it seconds, since this represents how many seconds I washed my hands for during that hand washing session in January. Now let's go ahead and create our relative frequency table. We want to go here to stats, down to table, and then frequency. And I'm just going to start here with frequency. That's it. I'm going to select nothing else except my seconds column and under statistic frequency, and then go ahead and compute. Whoa, lots of unique numeric values for seconds. Want to turn on binning for this feature? Just hit OK. You'll see what binning is in a second. So as you can see, it tells me that I washed my hands between 0 and 5 seconds 15 times, 5 and 10 seconds 48 times. Before I go on, though, notice it has 5 seconds both here and here. So where are these 5 seconds included? See this first 5 seconds, is it included in this first row or the second row? The answer is in the second row, and I'll show you what I mean here. Um, in the 0 to 5, this is how it's written, 0 to 5. What StatCrunch actually means is a bracket 0, comma 5, and then a parentheses. This is interval notation, and that tells you to include the 0 but not the 5. So then in the next row, when we see 5 to 10, what StatCrunch really means is bracket 5, comma 10, and then a parentheses. So all the 5 second ones are included in the next row. So all the values on the left are included in that row, the current row. All the values on the right will be in the next row. So that means um, the CDC recommends you wash your hand for at least 20 seconds. If I wanted to know how many times I washed my hands at least 20 seconds, I would not look at this third from last row, 15 to 20, since 20 is not included there. 20 to 25 is here and 25 to 30. So I could say I washed my hands over 20 seconds, at least 20 seconds that is, um, 84 times. And where did I get this 84? Well, I added 71 and 13. You can get StatCrunch to do that for you. So go ahead and type edit and then bin. So let's talk about what binning is. Binning is these labels here on the left. 
This is the lowest bin, and you can also call it class. So this is the class. The, low, um, the lower class boundary here is zero, and the upper class boundary on this first row is five. And the class width is five. So here I'm going to tell it to start at zero, but I want a class width or a bin width of 10. So now I only have three rows for when I wash my hands, zero to 10 seconds. And remember, 10 seconds is not included in this row. It's included in the next one. So this is zero all the way to nine seconds. And this is from 10 all the way to 19. So we write 10 to 20 and 20 to 30. So again, how many times in the month of January did I wash my hands for the minimum recommendation of 20 seconds? Well, here it is, 84 times. So now that we've created a frequency table, let's talk about other types of frequency tables. So I'm going to go here to edit, and I'm going to select frequency and relative frequency, and I'm going to go back to a bin width of five. I really like a bin width of five. And um, again, I'm leaving this visible, and I should write key here, key. This means this. I hope that's helpful to see that when you see this, it this is meant. Anywho, so let's talk about relative frequency. We still have our usual frequency table here, but now we have one more column that says relative frequency. So this is giving us the proportion of the total values that lie in this row. So go ahead and open up a calculator. I'm going to open up my basic calculator here from on my Mac. And let's look at, say, this first class, this first row of hand washing duration from 0 to 5 seconds. I did that 15 times. Um, how many times total did I wash my hands in January? Well, luckily, StatCrunch counts it for you, 173. But you can find that value yourself by adding 15, 48, 18, 8, 71, and 13. All of these values added together will give you 173. So what we wanted you to get the relative frequency is take this number here, 15 and divide it by the total number of times I've washed my hands, which this is called the sample size, and in this case, it's number of hand washing times. So that's 173 times I washed my hands in the month of January, and notice I get 0 0.0867. That's the same number that's here. Now, in case you don't think about um, you know, comparisons in terms of proportions, let's talk about how to do that with percentages. So I want you to highlight one more percent of total, Everything else stays the same. I've selected seconds. I have um, the bin width from zero to five. And in statistics, I have frequency, relative frequency, and percent of total. I'm going to go ahead and hit compute. And it adds one more table. Again, zero to five. This means this here. We include the zero and not the five. So now let's look at this. Here I have 0 0.0867 and, and more numbers. And on percent of total, I have 8.67. So percent, this is just the proportion multiplied by 100. So I can say I washed my hands between 0 and 5 seconds in the month of January about 8.7% of the time. I washed my hands between 20 and 25 seconds about 41% of the time. Now, let's go back and chat about the CDC recommendation is at least 20 seconds. So in order to get the percentage of times, the percent is a total of the 173 hand washing times in January, I could add up these last two rows here using a calculator. Alternatively, we can go into options, edit, and we can change our bin width to 10, hit compute, and suddenly I know that um, I washed my hands at least 20 seconds, and again, this 20 is included in this row because the lower number is what's included, so at least 20 seconds, 84 times, and as a percent of total, uh, total 173, that was about almost 49%, so not quite half the time was I washing my hands at least 20 seconds.